Death! <laughs> Talking about death. <coughs> when you die, your body will be put in the ground, or some people choose cremation. That is, unless you're a saint, in which case there is a chance you might end up like Saint Bernadette on display. Huh? Or your tongue and vocal cords might be on display like Saint Anthony of Padua. Whoa. Your clothes might even be divided up like Saint Padre Pio's habit. Or maybe like Saint Vincent de Paul, your bones and various organs would be put on display. What? That's right, your body will be left to rest in peace unless, perchance, you might be a saint in the Catholic Church. Why is the Catholic Church so weird about saints' bodies? It's because you can look forward to a day where you will come back to life. <gasps> Gary V! Three words! Let's give me inspiration for any day I'm throwing down. Three words! Three words. You're gonna die. So we're here at a cemetery, and a lot of people might find cemeteries creepy, but the reason the Catholic Church treats saints' bodies so special, and the reason we treat uh, our loved ones' bodies so special is because we actually believe uh, something happens to them after they die. Death is a consequence of sin, and this is exactly why Jesus came, to save us from death. Jesus himself experienced death, and he rose from the dead to restore us to life, to redeem us, and to give us this opportunity to receive the resurrection and the life of Jesus Christ. The Catechism says in paragraph 996, from the beginning, Christian faith in the resurrection has met with incomprehension and opposition. On no point does a Christian faith encounter more opposition than on the resurrection of the body. <laughs> it smells gross? Can you smell it? Doesn't it smell like... No. Maybe it's just me. Are you a vampire? So this practice of putting saints' bodies on display after death and honoring their bodies can seem really strange at first, but the idea is that the body has dignity and meaning even after death. I mean, we're not just yeah. spirits trapped in a, in a meat bag. <laughs> I mean, even after death, the bodies of those we love uh, we take great care of because the body is meaningful. It's, it's, it's not just like there's me somewhere in my body and then when I die, it's, there's like a separation of me from my body. It's actually we're a soul and a body. So like imagine this is a soul. And the soul is, kind, you know, it's an immaterial thing, but our soul and our body is united. And in death is when this separation of the soul and the body occurs. But it's not like me is, you know, just here or just here. There isn't just like one part of my body where I am, like my brain or my heart, but I'm not just a soul either. Human persons are both body and soul. So when the soul leaves the body, we call that death, but we can look forward to a time where our soul and a resurrected new glorified body will be united again. To be or not to be? Belief in the resurrection was historically pretty controversial, and it's understandably so. There was even a time in the church's history where the church did not allow Christians to be cremated because at the time to cremate the body was a public statement that you did not believe in the resurrection of the body. So what does all this mean? This means that the church takes the body seriously. We believe in the resurrection of the body, so that means the body should be treated with respect and dignity. We believe that in this resurrection of the dead, our bodies, now glorified after the pattern of Jesus Christ's glorified body, will be reunited with our soul. What we do with our body, we also do with our mind and spirit, since these things are so intertwined. It's not just at death that our body has meaning and dignity, it's throughout our lives as well. So how will you treat your body and soul with respect? This is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's the official summary written by the Church of everything Catholics believe. So it just sits on the shelf collecting dust. But if the contents of this Catechism are unlocked, it can change the world. We believe the Catechism isn't a dry, dusty textbook. It's a gift. It's the faithful echo of a God who desires to reveal himself to us. The heart of the Catechism is Jesus. And Jesus changes people. We just need to retransform the Catechism into a living voice that people can hear. So we're setting out to help unlock the Catechism. We're transforming the letter into a living voice for the modern world. We're creating videos, stories, animations, podcasts, social media. We're creating content that's relevant, watchable, the type of content you want to share with your friends. And all of this will be free to the world and translated into multiple languages. English, Spanish, French, Portuguese. 
to help people fall in love with the Catechism, the Church, and the heart of the Catechism, Jesus. Visit realtrue.org and join the movement. Join us and help unlock the Catechism for the world. Join in the project to retransform the letter into a living voice.